Persephone period? Hmm. Maybe that's why my fall garden never works. Welcome back to the Backyard Home Center. I'm Priscilla and I garden in containers in my backyard. So yes, Persephone period is a real thing. I never knew about it, but now I do understand why I've always had such a hard time with my fall garden and my seed starts. We, you see, we really don't even have fall. <laughs> we go from heat to cold, like no in between. And sometimes we get cold and then we get hot again and cold and hot again. And so if you're getting hot, you cannot put your fall seeds out. So anyway, my sister recently did a class explaining this Persephone period. So let's listen into what she has to say real quick. For us, we have to consider the fact that we're, we're still warm. So there's quite a few things that we need to actually start indoors, not outdoors, because it's still gonna to be too warm for them. You know, if you tried to plant some broccoli or cauliflower seeds outside, forget it, they're gonna go straight, they're gonna bolt, go straight Whoa, to seed. And I was gonna I was gonna put them in my seed trays outside, I guess not, huh? No, you need to start them indoors. So our fun thing with us is gonna be, is our winter solace, uh, solstice. And so we have what's called a Persephone period. And that's the period of time when, when our hours become 10 hours or less of daylight time. And that is very significant. You know, all, all, every everything you always hear about is is like first and last frost date. Well, mm -hmm. that's all fine and well and good, but those day hours of daylight is really what you need to go after. Because, so I have down here how you can look up your first frost date later on, but um, so our first frost date is December 4th this year for, for our area. But Persephone period starts November 23rd. So you've got, you know, a week and a half, two weeks there, actually, that you need, to, you really need to count backwards from the start of the Persephone period, mm -hmm. not your first frost date. Yeah. And everybody always talks about mm -hmm. count backwards from the first frost date, about that Persephone period. It's really important because you, you're not going to have much grow. You know, you, you can't really have much seedling wise grow once you get those lesser hours of daylight. Basically, you need your plant to mature before that period. Yeah. Uh, so you're going to take your days of maturity of, of whatever you're growing, and then you need to add two weeks for your adjustment for your cold temps. Um, and then you're going to add any transplant time, if applicable, if it's something that you're having to transplant. Um, so for example, I have an example here. Kale takes 60 days to maturity. So if you take a start date of 1123, November 23rd, that's the start of our Persephone period, and you count backwards 60 days, that will put you at September 24th. Then you need to subtract another 14 days for, to adjust for the cold, cold period, and then subtract 21 days for your transplant time and that puts you at uh, August 24th. Oh no, that's today. Yeah, so essentially you need to go home and start your kale <laughs> seeds right now. Okay, so I went home that day and I started my seeds right then. It was the perfect time to start them. <laughs> but then I ended up with a darn mouse in my closet and it got into my seed starts. So I had to bring them outside and yeah, they struggle just a little bit. Let's let's see. And Priscilla and today we're going to talk about starting our fall garden. But it's the end of August. Who's thinking about a fall garden? Usually not me, but I found out today why I need to start my seeds now in order to have a great harvest during the winter. Okay, so I better get busy starting seeds for the winter. Broccoli is going to be my prize possession this year. I'm gonna grow a ton of it. I'm ready. What else? Um, how about some um, celery? I love celery. You know what it is? Many things, lettuces, spinach, turnips, all of those things are fall crops. And lettuce, I don't know about you, but I like having salad in the summer, not the winter. But if we eat seasonally, 
it's probably almost the opposite. But that's when you're gonna get your most nutrition in. You know, lettuce, we can't freeze lettuce. We can freeze broccoli. So I'm making a ton of it. I'm going to get the stuff I need to start seeds now so that my plants mature enough to have the best uh, success for harvesting during the winter. I'll um, save as much and preserve as much as I possibly can. And then before you know it, it's gonna be time to start the spring garden again. Oh! All right, what are you growing? I'm gonna plant my seeds now, let's go. Okay, so as you heard in the class, Jen explained that there is a Persephone period. I'm gonna show you, see that Persephone period. So that's when um, there's less than 10 hours of daylight. But So you really have to have your mature plants prior to that um, period. Because if you don't, then there's not enough sunlight for your fall crop to actually mature enough to produce a harvest. And this is what's been happening to me. Every fall, I plant a garden, each and every fall. And each and every fall, I don't get a harvest. Now, last year, last fall crop, I actually did manage to get some pretty big cabbages in my containers, which was pretty exciting. Um, and I did get some broccoli, but just not enough. And I want a ton of it. <laughs> that and Brussels sprouts. So yeah, we're going to start early, unlike we've done before. And it's actually a beautiful weekend. So it's perfect to get out and get the seed started. Today, my starts. Did you get your fall starts, your seeds started early? I, I always seem to miss having my fall garden in because I wait too long. We had triple digits just a couple weeks ago. And had I waited like I normally do, I would not have these starts. But it got to up, back up, it went down to in the 80s and then it went back up to the triple digits. These have been outside because I couldn't keep them in my closet all this time. They're doing fine except that, yeah, some pest pressure. So let's see if we can salvage it. Come on, let's go.
great roots. This is um, Swiss chard and um, bok choy. So they've been munched. Let me see if I can work on that and bring them back to life. Days without water along the sun so prone. Cross over borders, get where we are, and it's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. I did it all for you. It's 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 all for you. I did it all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. We've got a hot pink Swiss chard, one, two. This is magenta, one, two. A whole tray of bok choy. And then two trays of broccoli. Some leeks. One cilantro, one cabbage. Can you see it there? One baby cabbage. Yep, that's it. Well, I'm done <laughs> potting them up, so let's see how they do. I'll keep you posted. Make sure you hit that little notification bell. You'll see my next video. I just love starting my own seeds. So I'm gonna have to get a little better in my situation. And see, this is the thing about gardening. You learn, every season you learn something else. And every season you start something different so that you're continually learning and it's just so rewarding. I absolutely love it. I, I wouldn't um, replace my garden for any. Now, you're not gonna wanna miss the next video because I have something else coming. So make sure you're subscribed. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.